All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And like you see in the title, we're about to dive into every little major NFL report and rumor centered around free agency, draft, everything. We're talking about trades that have already happened and that may potentially happen. We're talking about cuts that have already happened. We're talking about franchise tags that have already happened, that could happen, and that more than likely won't happen, but who may eventually be headed to free agency. The open market. Also, a lot of draft stuff as well. And let me go ahead and preface this with the fact that for all of my Commanders fans out there, a lot of this information will be useful for you. But this is like an entire NFL thing. The goal of this video is really to inform everybody about everything that I'm hearing so far that I could find in any corner of the Internet. And like, say you're doing first round mock drafts for all 32 NFL teams. This will give you a better idea of what to predict. Or even from the point of view of a Commanders fan, you know this guy's a available this guy may not be available and this player that you may specifically want at this specific position in free agency there's other teams interested in that same player as well so you have some competition so this is a general all major NFL reports and rumors situation some of it factual some things that have happened some things of rumors may happen a nice healthy blend of both let's have fun but before we dive into all of that make sure you still farm that like button still farm the subscription button still farm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one i'm gonna keep y'all up to date with everything of course my commanders fans we're doing videos one or two every day just for y'all but i'm also gonna do some big time nfl updates while we're here as well every now and then just to keep y'all up to date on what's going on everywhere amongst all 32 teams so stay tuned for that but without further ado let's go ahead and get to it man let's get it All right, so I feel like it's only fitting to go ahead and start with the QB carousel. And there's a lot going on just quarterback-wise alone. Like Russell Wilson is officially released by the Denver Broncos. But even though he will not officially be released until after the new league year, March 13th, he is now free to talk to prospective teams per source. The Broncos have no issues with that. So he is essentially a free agent already, but technically they will not be releasing them until March 13th. Remember the tampering period starts March 11th. So we'll start to see things like such and such signed to such and such team for this amount of money over the course of these amount of years. And then usually once the new league year starts as of March 13th, that's when we start to get like real details about roster bonus, signing bonus, guaranteed cap hits for specific years and things like that. But just know we're less than a week away from free agency really kicking off. I'm super excited. And Russell Wilson being released officially by the Broncos is big news, man. That's going to start it off. That's going to be a domino effect because some of these QB needy teams, maybe like the Falcons, we'll talk about that later, are probably looking for a guy like Russell Wilson. So that could potentially take them out of the running for trading up for a quarterback in the draft. Again, a lot of these things affect each other. It's really fun when you're taking and look at it that's why I'm doing this video because you're going to be like oh, okay if this team does this then that means this team will probably do this because those kind of go hand in hand it's a domino effect you'll see also, Adam Schefter said on the Pat McAfee show that the Steelers may potentially look into the Justin Fields or Russell Wilson situation to potentially bring them in as the starting quarterback there. Really interesting, man. Also, Vikings specifically, they have a lot of rumors going on. There's a lot centered around the Vikings between who they're current quarterback is Kirk Cousins and whether he'll probably end up leaving to go somewhere else or who they may want to bring in to replace him potentially if they end up going with another quarterback choice other than Kirk Cousins so first of all Brett Coleman shouts out to him does great work on YouTube and his film breakdowns love his podcast and everything he said I truly believe that the Vikings want Kirk back but they are also more than willing to let him go to Atlanta simply because they view this quarterback class that highly. I'm also coming around to the idea of McCarthy to Minnesota, which is really interesting because I think, I mean, if you wanted to potentially compare somebody to a Kirk Cousins, I guess you would say J.J. McCarthy, even though I feel like he's 
a little bit more toolsy, like more mobile, potentially a stronger arm and things like that, you could argue. But I can see that Kevin O'Connell would potentially love a J.J. McCarthy if the Vikings want to do that and if he would actually make it that far to their pick in the middle of the first round. But I want to also dissect the fact that Brent Coleman is saying it as if like if Kirk Cousins is leaving the Vikings, it's pretty much destined for him to end up in Atlanta. And I thought that was an interesting piece of news already. Also, the Minnesota Vikings have reportedly expressed interest in Bears quarterback Justin Fields. Most important thing I take away from this is that there's apparently a market for Justin Fields out there. We've been hearing Atlanta, Justin Fields becoming a thing for like weeks now, since even before the combine started and the odds just kept increasing, increasing, increasing by the day. And now apparently the Vikings are trying to get in on it as well. So it sounds like if I'm a Bears fan, I'm happy because with there being a market for Justin Fields, it sounds like teams may potentially even outbid each other and the Bears could probably demand more in the trade because there's more demand for them. And they can be a little bit stingy like, nah, yeah, I know you want them Vikings, but the Falcons just offer me this. And then the Vikings up that offer just by a slight bit. And then the Bears go back to the Falcons and be like, hey, man, Minnesota Vikings just beat out your previous offer. If you really want Justin Fields, you're going to have to add a little bit more to it. Bears can go back and forth like that if there is truly a market for Justin Fields. But at the same time, you may not want to play around too much if you get at least a relatively decent deal in return potentially trade value or even maybe a player included as well go ahead and take that bears don't play around with that you play around with fire it can get a little ugly for you and then also apparently cowboys quarterback trey lance could be a possible solution at quarterback for the vikings if they lose Kirk cousins to free agency someone at the combine told rich eisen this is coming from rich eisen i'm also trying to make sure i include where this source is coming from so it doesn't sound like i'm just making stuff up also, reportedly, the Minnesota Vikings have even looked into Sam Darnold as a possible option if Kirk Cousins moves on. So that's two ex-49ers quarterbacks in a row, even though Sam Darnold wasn't drafted by the 49ers. But both of those guys, Trey Lance included, have played for the 49ers before. Also, the Falcons are expected to make a strong push for Vikings' Kirk Cousins. Cousins was in Washington with Raheem Morris. Remember that? Remember that all-star 2013 coaching class with Bobby Slowick and Mike McDaniels and Kevin O'Connell, I believe, and Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Raheem Morris, maybe not Kevin O'Connell yet, but everybody else I named all on that same Matt LaFleur, don't forget him as well, all on one coaching staff and Kirk Cousins was there back then. So he does have a relationship with Raheem Morris, who is now the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons after being the defensive coordinator for the Rams. And once upon a time, when he was the defensive backs coach for the Washington well, Redskins at the time when Kirk Cousins was there before he left to go to another team for another job. Also, last thing to speak on with the Vikings, there's a report that Kirk Cousins to the Atlanta Falcons is actually starting to heat up. So this is not just the Falcons pursuing Kirk Cousins. Apparently from several league sources around, this is coming from NFLDraftDiamonds.com. A lot of different sources are saying that maybe it is Kirk Cousins to the Falcons. But again, we would get in that same level of aggression and multiple sources saying the same thing about Justin Fields to the Falcons. So who knows? We'll see when it happens. And then the Patriots all also have a couple of updates surrounding them as well because 2023 backup quarterback Jacoby Brissett has apparently received some interest from the Patriots as a potential bridge quarterback while the quarterback that they end up taking in the draft develops potentially with the number three overall pick. But if they were to get like a Jacoby Brissett in free agency, somebody that can start right now for them that plays at at least a decent level, then maybe they'd be willing to trade back from the number three overall pick and take a riskier quarterback rather than like a Drake May or Jaden Daniels or definitely, I, I, I'm pretty sure Kayla Williams coming number one overall. But still, multiple people we spoke to told us to watch Jacoby Brissett return back to the Patriots Joe Flacco as a backup plan and to be the bridge starter for the rookie quarterback that they may even draft at number three overall but again I think if you bring in a guy like Jacoby Brissett maybe that opens the window for the Patriots to potentially trade back and then take one of the riskier quarterbacks and just get more trade value in return so you can help build this team because the Patriots need more than just quarterbacks so I can see that route and then also the New England Patriots have been mentioned as a landing spot for Baker May field as well there's no confirmed interest there but a lot of people around the nfl are saying that that would actually be a pretty good match there i think that's interesting now moving on the giants have an interesting dilemma right now with quarterback 
because it seems like from what people are saying, most notably Rich Eisen, he said, quote, the Giants are absolutely done with Daniel Jones. The words I heard at the combine multiple times were buyer's remorse, unquote. That is crazy for Rich Eisen to say that directly like that. The Giants are absolutely done with Daniel Jones. It's actually a little surprising to me. I mean, I know they just gave him a lot of money. So I was thinking like, I mean, it, maybe give him another year at least. So, but, so I am a little shocked that like they're done with him now and they may replace him this draft. So as far as all of those teams that need quarterback, watch out. The Giants are one of those teams that may be heavily in the market for a draft quarterback at the very least, even if they're not in free agency. And remember, the Giants have the sixth overall pick. So a lot of those other QB needy teams like the Falcons at eight. Maybe the again the Vikings at eleven potentially. I know the Raiders have been very aggressive about acquiring a quarterback. Maybe even trading up all the way to three. Maybe even inquiring about my Commanders number two pick. But they're all the way down at thirteen. And then of course the Denver Broncos right of right in between them and the Vikings at twelfth overall. They just cut Russell Wilson. They're probably in the market for a quarterback. I don't see JJ McCarthy making it past that Minnesota Vikings eleven, Denver Broncos twelve, and Las Vegas Raiders at thirteen. I just don't see him making it past those teams. Somebody's gonna take him before that's all said and done. Before we get past that thirteenth pick, I can definitely see that. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody sooner takes him, like the Falcons or Giants. I'm not a big JJ McCarthy fan myself. But I do feel like I think it's somewhere in the middle. The hype that he's up there with like Jaden Daniels and Drake may too much. But also this hype that he's just terrible and or well, the complete opposite of hype where people are acting like he's just absolutely awful. I disagree with that as well. I'm probably somewhere in the middle. Now, also, let's talk about free agency outside of quarterbacks. So apparently the Patriots plan to pursue Tyron Smith in free agency. And let me go ahead and let you know this now. I haven't seen any report or rumor about this, but I will be shocked if my commanders don't pursue Tyron Smith with with Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. leaving the Cowboys to come here as a head coach and defensive coordinator. Now, granted, none of those guys are on the offensive side of the ball, but I'm pretty sure they've noticed how much Tyron Matthew mattered to the Cowboys and the success they've had the past few years. So I would be extremely surprised if the commanders aren't pursuing him as well. Let me just go ahead and throw that out there as a commanders fan. We need tackle in the worst way. We need to tackle before we release Charles Leno. Then after we release Charles Leno, I couldn't even tell you who our starting left tackle may be. And then we still have Andrew Wiley at right tackle. So we probably need two of them. So even after we signed Tyron Smith, I'm still like, I don't know, man. Still may want to go tackle with our second round pick. We'll see. Also, apparently Dak Prescott is confident on the contract resolution with the Cowboys. And they have a weird situation going on right now because Dak Prescott is set to count 59.45 million against the cap in 2024 alone. He has a $29 million base salary and has a $5 million roster bonus due on the fifth day of the league year, which I believe is March 18th. An extension could bring Prescott's cap number down substantially, but it took the sides nearly two years to negotiate the four-year, $160 million Prescott signed in 2021. As part of the deal, the Cowboys cannot place the franchise tag on Prescott in 2025, and he has a no-trade clause. Boy, that boy had all the leverage when he came up with that contract. God, Lee. Good luck, Cowboys, man, because y'all are already ugly in cap space. I believe they have negative $4 million right now, somewhere around the lines of like slightly negative and then you still got to figure out what you're going to do with his contract you got to get ready to start to pay Micah Parsons and Trevon Diggs soon as well I feel for y'all Cowboys as a Commanders fan I hope y'all don't figure it out but boy it's ugly I can hey man whoo we also next the Tennessee Titans are expected to target Bears Darnell Mooney the wide receiver and Lions CJ Garner Johnson the safety in free agency so watch out for the Titans being a little aggressive trying to pry away some other teams good players um, but I'm pretty sure all teams are going to do that but of course with any rumors and reports that we're talking about today these are just things I'm seeing and I want to make sure y'all hear these things today again when you're doing mock free agencies when you're doing mock drafts you just have some of this background knowledge but again a lot of these reports and rumors 
maybe not even from necessarily trustworthy sources so take everything i'm talking about in this video with a grain of salt other than just pure factual things like this team cut this player this team is trading for this player it's already in works and things like that now the buccaneers are another team that have a lot going on as well because they already signed mike evans to a two-year 52 million dollar deal and we were seeing reports as of just not even like an entire week ago about he will hit free agency and see what's out there he wants to go to a super bowl contender all of these reports and that takes me to my next point because jenna lane of espn tweeted those reporting that mike evans had planned to enter free agency weren't wrong he was his agent Derek gilmore even told the bucks in august quote if you let the horse out the barn he's gone unquote but then this week evans called gilmore and said he wanted to be a buck for life and I guess the rest is history. I don't know what changed his mind, but the Buccaneers made it work. They found a way. And, hey, man, more power to both parties involved. Speaking of both parties involved, sadly for my commanders, I was hoping there was a way that we could get them. But I was pretty sure that even if they didn't sign them long term, he was going to get franchise tag. But the Buccaneers and star safety Antoine Winfield, arguably the best safety in the NFL last year, are zeroing in on a multi-year contract that could look something like three to four years worth with $20 million per season. Hey. Hey, man, commanders will pay you a little bit more than that, man. Pull up. Pull up, man. Don't even worry about it, man. We got big money yuns for you, dog. And then lastly, for the Buccaneers, it's considered highly unlikely that the Buccaneers use the franchise tag on linebacker Devin White. It sounds like he's pretty much gone. And it, he's such an interesting case because he was looking like one of the best linebackers in the league just a couple of years ago. And then he just suddenly fell off the face of the earth. Somebody must have space jammed his powers away because it's like absolutely ridiculous looking at his tape from, say, like 2021 or 2020 compared to what he looked like this past season. I really don't know why it's that bad. I don't even remember him having any like major injuries that could have contributed to this. I don't know what happened, but this is being reported from Matt Lombardo NFL. So again, sources coming from all different places with a lot of things. Now let me update y'all on a lot of guys that have already been cut or released. The Giants officially released Mark Glowinski. If anybody wants him as an offensive lineman, the Vikings have released running back Alexander Madison. If y'all do fantasy football, y'all know how valuable Alexander Madison has been, especially when Dalvin Cook was there and he would get hurt. So this was a guy you could kind of steal off a waiver wire that would give you like running back two fantasy production at worst sometimes like he was killing it he saved a couple of my fantasy leagues a couple of years ago so more power to alexander madison anybody that's in need of a running back hey man there you go right there i'm surprised the vikings moved on from him also the buffalo bills are expected to release running back naeem hines and the team will save 4.6 million dollars in cap space from that move also the patriots we're expecting to release J.C. Jackson to save $14.3 million on their salary cap as of February 15th. And then as of March 1st, four days ago, he was officially released. So J.C. Jackson is out there. Y'all know how the Patriots do, man. Once a star corner, especially cornerback, but really kind of every position. But once a star cornerback is ready to hit the market and get their big time money, preferably from the Patriots. They want to stay with the Patriots, but the Patriots way, they just do not sign, especially specifically corners, to big-time contracts. They'll let them walk, find another still in the draft, develop them, get elite play out of them, and then the cycle repeats itself. That player within three to four years leaves and goes to another team to be a great corner. But I've also noticed the pattern that a lot of those guys leave the Patriots and then are suddenly not as good as they once were when they were on the Patriots. Stephon Gilmore is like the only one that kind of broke that curse a little bit but everybody else it seems like when they leave the Patriots they aren't as good as they were on the Patriots so the Patriots I guess have this situation where they understand like hey man you're nothing without us so we're not going to pay you this big time money those guys are willing to pay you yeah go ahead and get your money from them but you're not going to be as productive with them as you were with us so hey man evil stuff but business is business shouts out to the Patriots for having a system going also the Philadelphia Eagles are releasing safety Kevin Byard the move will save them 13 million dollars in cap space and remember the eagles just traded a fifth sixth and terrell Edmonds for bayard in october and that was a big time trade that was one of those trades as a commanders fan i was looking around like hey what a fifth round pick a sixth round pick and then a player for 
Kevin and Bayer, what are we doing? Why didn't we do that type of thing? But the Eagles are apparently done with them. They tried to go all in, all eggs in one basket to try to win the Super Bowl this past year. After going to the Super Bowl last year, I'm not even mad at them. I like the risk-taking. Shouts out to Ian Cunningham and all of those guys, a part of their front office and what they've been doing over there. It didn't work out at all this past season. They didn't even win a playoff game. And they had a lot of meltdowns like within the team and things like that. But, hey, man, I'm not mad at them trying it. I'm not, I'm not mad at the Eagles. If I'm an Eagles fan, and I'm like, hey, man, at least we tried. We put all of our eggs in one basket. It's cool. Didn't work out. But, hey, man, at least they had fun. I'm not mad at it at all, man. If I'm an Eagles fan, I don't have any regrets. But it is looking ugly. Right now, the Cowboys cap situation, Eagles cap situation, they're, like, barely positive. I think they're, like, positive, like, 30 million, which is still pretty good. But it's, like, 16th in the NFL. They're, like, somewhere in the middle. Um, and then I, I think that's even after cutting Kevin Byers. So, right now, a lot of guys are cap casualties. I'm pretty sure if Kevin Byer willing to take like an extreme pay cut, they would keep him. But I'm pretty sure he's like, nah, cut me so I can go get big money elsewhere because I'm pretty sure somebody wants me. And, hey, man, Commanders may be one of those teams. I ain't going to lie. Let me just throw that out there. Also, the New Orleans Saints are expected to release safety Marcus May. And I remember as a Commanders fan, I wanted him two different free agency cycles that he was available. So this is interesting. May in his career has eight interceptions, 28 passes defended, and over 400 tackles. And I guess I got to go watch the tape to see what he did with the Saints last year because I wanted him very bad before he ended up going to the Saints. So I'm curious, did he have a great season with them or not? The Carolina Panthers are also expected to release or trade cornerback Dante Jackson. That will save them $5.9 million in cap space. That's really interesting. So if you need a corner... And maybe if all other 31 teams just act like they don't want him and play hardball, the Carolina Panthers may reach a point where they just have to cut him. And then you can go get him as a free agent rather than have to give up trade value to get him. And then the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are expected to release Shaq Barrett. So that's another. I should have mentioned that earlier alongside the Devin White situation. So, hey, man, anybody in that wants a Shaq Barrett, he's probably going to be available. Also, the Steelers are planning on potentially – trading Deontay Johnson, which is really interesting because I think he's a really good receiver. I feel like his problems are more so Kenny Pickett and – I mean, their offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, before they fired him, boy, that he was arguably the worst offensive coordinator in the NFL. So I feel like a lot of Deontay Johnson's problems came from that as well. Some of it may be his fault as well, but I feel like the Steelers are failing him more than he's failing the Steelers. And I'm pretty sure he himself even wants to get traded out of there unless they find a way to get like a really good quarterback through trade and free agency or whatever. Also, the 49ers, Brandon Ayuk is a potential trade candidate if a long-term deal cannot be reached. And that's being reported by ESPN. And I'm planning on doing like a specific 30 minute breakdown on him alone for my commanders so commanders fans definitely stay in tune for that just like i did a full 30 minute breakdown on the brian burns situation and whether we could potentially get him in free agency whether he'll get franchise tag how much how much money he's potentially asking for and things like that age all of that I'm going to potentially do something like that for Brandon Ayuk before free agency starts March 11th. So be on the lookout for that. But I think that's really interesting because the 49ers clearly want to keep them. But if they're not able to get a long-term deal done, they're not about to just keep franchise tagging them and delaying the inevitable they'll just go ahead and get some value for him now before he even has a chance to hit free agency or anything like that also there are several rumors around the Denver Broncos that Justin Simmons could potentially get traded to the Eagles that's crazy because this was one of the top safeties in the NFL just a couple of years ago he maybe still is and so the Eagles could go from Kevin Byard to Justin, matter of fact, CJ Garner Johnson to Kevin Byer to Justin Simmons is crazy. That's almost like the Packers going from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love, man. I'm sick of it, man. I'm absolutely sick of it. Also, Makai Beckton wise, the tackle from the Jets, the Tennessee Titans and Atlanta Falcons have been named as teams to watch as in an expected event that Makai Beckton does actually leave the Jets. If the Jets decide not to re-sign him or franchise tag him or whatever if he becomes an unrestricted free agent expect the titans and the falcons to be in on it i think the commanders need tackle so bad that we should at the very least inquire about the situation if he becomes an unrestricted free agent but maybe we won't want him because he has he's flashed i can admit like ever i wanted him really bad coming out of louisville in the draft and he's flashed but he's had his times where he's been bad he's been injury prone relatively every now and then so i don't know that's a risky one i wouldn't give him big money but i would definitely take a chance on a makai becton also 
And we've been talking about Derrick Henry for like a year now. Titans free agent Derrick Henry reportedly considered going to the Miami Dolphins as a destination if he ends up leaving Tennessee. And that is scary, dog. Like, come on, bro. Can we please, as a league, veto that? Just like how the the league vetoed the Chris Paul to the Lakers trade. Can we step in and not allow Derrick Henry to go to the Dolphins, man? Can we please chill out, Dolphins? Like, God, Lee, man. Y'all already have two good running backs. Why you need three? And then now franchise tags. And this is really interesting because this is going to determine who's actually available in free agency and who's not. This is actually really interesting. So far, we only know of two people that have been confirmed to be franchise tagged. We have wide receiver T. Higgins of the Bengals, and I don't blame him. That's one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL. If you're not up on T. Higgins, you're asleep. And then Chiefs cornerback Legereus Need. I wouldn't let him walk either, man. The, the Chiefs just lost Traverius Ward just a couple of years ago. He walked and went to the 49ers. Don't let Legereus Need leave as well, man. That defense was elite this past year. You know how, you know, previous Chiefs visits or, or victories in the Super Bowl past couple of years, it's been like their offense carrying. This year, it was really the defense. It was Pat Mahomes and that defense more than anything else. And again, that's it for confirmed franchise tags. And just to let you know, I'm recording this video at 6 a.m. right now. The franchise tag deadline is today, March 5th, Tuesday at 4 p.m. So we have less than 12 hours before we know for a fizz act who's getting franchise tagged and who's not. So right now, some of the people that are reportedly going to be franchise tagged but have not been yet, and maybe it doesn't happen. As a Commanders fan, I have my fingers crossed for both of them. Jaguars edge rusher Josh Allen and Panthers edge rusher Brian Burns. Both of them are expected to be franchise tagged, but I haven't seen nothing yet. And both of them are basically dependent on whether or not they can get a long-term deal done before the franchise tag deadline or not. Like they prefer for both situations to get long-term deals done. And reportedly, again, I did a whole 30-minute breakdown on the Brian Burns situation in every way possible. There's a report that he turned down $27 million a year from the Panthers. So I don't know what he's asking for. Maybe he just completely wants out of the Panthers and he's overtaxing them. Maybe he's not willing to take $27 million for them, but he's willing to take $27 million or maybe slightly less than that with another team because he just sees all of the terrible turmoil and that they don't really have much of a break. They only have a first-round pick. How are you the worst team in the NFL and don't have a first round pick? You got to choose one, man. God, Lee. So he maybe just wants out. That's just me speculating as of right now. I didn't even really necessarily talk about that in that breakdown. That breakdown was just purely report, report, fact, fact, and things like that. And right now, I'm just kind of brainstorming some ideas out loud as I'm going. Really just freestyling. But again... It seems like the Jaguars and the Panthers want to get their top tier edge rusher signed long term. If they cannot, then the franchise tag is kind of like a bailout, like a win in doubt. I got this. We're going to keep them. You're going to play for us in 2024. That's all we know. We'll figure out the rest later. Maybe we can tag you and trade you after that a little tag and trade maybe we could tag you for now and then figure out a long-term contract later on down the line or something like that but all we know is you're not going anywhere in 2024 that's what it seems like and then as far as guys that are reportedly not going to get tagged full of running backs Full of running back. Running backs right now have it terrible in free agency. Remember last year, the, the running backs were apparently, they had like a whole group chat together. All of the top running backs. And they were supposed to like be in solidarity with each other and nobody just signed a contract. And then all it took was for one running back to take a cheap contract. And then that just completely depleted all of the leverage and value that any running back had. And then eventually everybody just ended up having to sign cheap little one-year deals, franchise tags or whatever. Saquon Barkley, not expected to get tagged from the Giants. Tony Pollard, the running back from the Cowboys, not expected to get tagged. Derrick Henry, the running back from the Titans, not expected to get tagged. Same thing with the Raiders running back, Josh Jacobs, Chargers running back, Austin Eckler. And that's it. Those are the only rumors, reports, whatever you want to say on potential guys that will not get tagged. It's only running backs. Only. And that tells you everything you need to know about how running backs are valued at the very least in free agency. I still feel like in the draft, we're definitely kind of playing them a little bit like you could take running backs a little bit sooner than that. But then again, if everybody plays chicken on the running back position, then that means that 
you know, if everybody's in cahoots and I mean, this is really evil, but if every all 32 teams just all come together and be like, hey, if you don't draft the running back in the first round, I won't. You know what I'm saying? And now everybody can get running back second round or later and things like that. But running backs still matter. We're seeing that on teams right now. But free agency is different because the running back shelf life, that career span is a little ugly. Them second contracts are bad. And my Georgia Bulldog, Todd Gurley, was one of them. Then Ezekiel Elliott. Ohio State with the Cowboys was another one. Pay them big money, and they're not the same. And now the team that paid them feels stupid. And it's messed it up for guys like Tony Pollard and Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs and those guys. They look elite right now, but teams are just afraid of the fact that once they pay that running back, they're just suddenly going to fall off a cliff immediately afterwards. Even if it's not this upcoming season, maybe it's the season after that. And now you've paid them four years, and you're committed to giving them big money for four years, and they're not really giving you much production back or again just like with the draft scenario i gave you maybe all 32 teams are in cahoots and instead of the with the the running back should have done as far as being in solidarity with each other maybe all 32 teams are in solidarity with each other and like hey man i won't give a running back top money if you don't so we can all win all 32 teams win we can all get these running backs for cheap but it just only takes that one person to give up, and then the whole thing comes crumbling down. And, you know, the uh, man, poor running backs, man. They really tried. And, again, I just want to remind y'all, March 5th, as in today, Tuesday, 4 p.m. is the deadline for franchise tagging players. Transition tags, whatever you want to do. So, hey, man, watch that deadline come up because that's going to be really interesting. Oh, my Lord. And then trade-wise, there's already been a trade. The Bills have agreed to send offensive lineman Ryan Bates to Chicago for a fifth round pick in the 2024 NFL draft. Is this the first trade? I, I wasn't able to notice, find any other trades other than this one. So this is like the first trade of the 2024 offseason. That's really interesting. Not like a super star studded trade that's like high profile, but the fact that it's the first one while no other trades are really going on, very interesting. Wouldn't be surprised if we start to see some draft trades soon because I believe the Saints and the Eagles did a draft trade around this time time last year or two years or two years ago somewhere around this time I thought they did like a draft trade because I remember it being like extra early like dog I didn't even know we were doing trades yet and they out here doing these weird first round trades and things like that but now what's really interesting that the Bears only have five picks in the NFL draft they picked twice within the first round pick one and nine and then after that they don't have a pick until the third round and then they have two fourth rounders and that is it that is really weird. So right now, the commanders easily have the most draft capital, the most draft value in this entire draft because we pick second, and then we have two seconds, we have two thirds, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So, hey, amen. Bears, that's a really interesting situation. I mean, y'all literally draft twice in the first round. And then you might as well just turn the draft off after that if you're a Bears fan. By like 10 p.m., you're done. By 9-something, you're done. And then you might as well not even turn it back on until round three, which is going to be probably like 10 p.m. on Friday. And then you can start watching early Saturday morning for round four. And then by the time you're done with your second, fourth round pick, you, you might as well go ahead and turn the TV off again. That's a really interesting draft situation for those guys. Only five picks, and two of them are within the top ten of the first round. That's really weird, y'all. And then draft rumors wise, this is where it gets really interesting. The Raiders have inquired about trading up to picks five, six, and seven right now. Maybe they're targeting one of those lesser quarterbacks. That's what it sounds like because they know, again, with them being at 13th, maybe they need to trade up to five, six, or seven to potentially beat out, say, the Vikings. Or even that's like this the seventh spot is one spot ahead of the Falcons. And they know that the Falcons are probably pursuing quarterback heavily, especially if they don't get like a Russell Wilson or a Kirk Cousins. If they're if the Falcons decide to go draft quarterback, the Raiders may literally trade up with the Titans to move one spot ahead of them to get the quarterback that they both want. That's really interesting. I'm surprised the Raiders aren't reaching all the way up to number three, though, because I've heard reports that the Patriots are more likely to trade back than my commanders are at number two. So maybe the Raiders should at least give the Patriots a call to see, hey, man, you know, it's probably a lot of value, though. Oh, my Lord. The amount of picks you got to give up to move from 13 to three with a really good at least three quarterbacks in this class that's interesting also the las vegas raiders have called the patriots about the third overall pick and are expected to target lsu 
quarterback, Jaden Daniels, with that pick. So there you go. All right. So I was just questioning. I'm really surprised they haven't at least called the Patriots. There you go. They've also reportedly called the um, Patriots. But the first report about them calling about five, six, and seven seems more like a report from the Athletic. And then the, them calling the Patriots seems more like a rumor because that's coming from NFL rumors and you know how that goes. But of course, I don't know a lot of people know, but Antonio Pierce literally recruited Jaden Daniels to Arizona State. So Jaden Daniels loves Antonio Pierce. I'm pretty sure he would love that scenario if it were to happen. Also, Joe Klatt said that he would be surprised if J.J. McCarthy isn't drafted in the first 15 picks. And some people are kind of freaking out about it, but I wouldn't be surprised. I personally, I don't like J.J. McCarthy enough to take him in the top 15. Like, if I'm the commanders, even if you're tired of Sam Howell and we trade back, do not take J.J. McCarthy in the top 15. In my pres- I don't like him that much, but I just already know with the how valuable the QB position is with it technically being the most valuable position and arguably all of sports. Then right after that, I guess you have, like, edge rusher, then left tackle right after those, and probably, like, in a close third place. But with quarterback being so valuable, even if J.J. McCarthy isn't that great, it's just they get overdrafted. Running backs get underdrafted. Quarterbacks get overdrafted. That's just how it works, man, plain and simple. And, I mean, it's just the way the world works. And then the New England Patriots are trending to potentially keep their third overall pick. So we were hearing reports as of just days ago that they were potentially open to trading back. But now, as of literally just a, a couple of days ago as well, apparently the Patriots are trending towards just keeping that pick and taking whatever quarterback's available, which means that they're very high on three quarterbacks. That's what I'm assuming. Because if you're willing to stay at number three, that means you're okay with whoever the commanders take. If you're not trying to move up in front of the commanders, potentially trade with the commanders at number two or the Bears with number one, that means you're like, hey, man, Caleb Williams, Drake, Mayor, Jaden Daniels, we don't care. Just give us one of them. We're happy, which is really interesting. And that also means that the Patriots have to be looking to either cut or trade Mac Jones. And there's reports that he's really been focused on improving his footwork this offseason, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to potentially – make him an attractive quarterback option for a team that needs a quarterback. But yeah, man, the Patriots are going to have to move on from Mac Jones. I mean, maybe they could just keep him as a backup. Who knows? Also, several scouts reportedly have Spencer Rattler ranked ahead of Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. in this draft. Now, you notice J.J. McCarthy wasn't included in that. So J.J. McCarthy seems to be kind of like a nothing's unanimous, but like majority quarterback four in this draft class and then after that some people feel like it's Spencer Rattler right after him just off of the natural talent of course like when we're talking floors Spencer Rattler has the lowest floor out of the like the top seven eight quarterbacks but when you're talking about ceiling and potential I can see it because remember back in Spencer Rattler's rookie season after being the number one quarterback in his recruiting class of course a five star people were comparing him to Pat Mahomes and everything that talent is still there it just takes a team to get it out of him consistently and then he tested terribly at the combine so I don't think that helped this case much, case much at all when you're trying to talk about ceiling but when it comes to arm talent it's there you just got to teach him how to be a better quarterback natural God-given talent he's got it but who boy that, that quarterback part that nuance the IQ the awareness the reading defenses and things like that struggle but there are drives where Spencer Rattler has looked like one of the best quarterbacks in this class the problem is he can't do it consistently he can only do it for like a drive or two in a game and then the rest of the game he just completely like what was that they don't even look like the same quarterback and then lastly before we get up out of here a couple of retirements happening Philadelphia Eagles Hall of Future Hall of Famer Center. Jason Kelsey has officially retired. He came out with this whole press conference, said a few jokes, and really cool. That was really dope. Shouts out to him, man. Um, I hope a really good retirement for you. Real cool dude, man. Hard to not root for him. And then also, there's reportedly speculation that Philadelphia Eagles Fletcher Cox may retire. The defensive tackle, which as a Commanders fan, thank goodness, man. Oh, I'm sick of it. Whoo! And with defensive line right now being one of our biggest weaknesses, I'm pleased. Fletcher Cox leave us alone so I think this is really interesting because it looks like the Eagles are potentially losing the middle of the trenches on both sides of the ball in one offseason I'm surprised that Jason Kelsey even came back for this previous season I thought he would retire after the 2022 season he came back for one more year and 
I mean, again, they were just like all eggs in one basket. They just went to the Super Bowl. They felt how close they were to winning it. And so they were like all hands on deck, trade for guys, bring guys in on one-year deals, convince Jason Kelsey to come back. Just give us one more year. And sadly, it didn't work out for those guys. Well, as a Commanders fan, I'm happy. But guys like Jason Kelsey, I really like him, man. So I'm sad to see that host because you could just tell he was done. There were times last season where he just looked like he was just completely finished with football like he had some mental mistakes where he was getting false starts that he would never get before you could just tell man they definitely convinced him to just please give us just one more season we were just in the Super Bowl we could take that next step to win it then also in very surprising news now I don't know how legitimate this is but apparently New York Giants tight end Darren Waller is debating whether or not to hang up the cleats and retire that's crazy Y'all know I root for Darren Waller. That's my guy. I mean, he's lived all kinds of places, but he was based in Atlanta for a while. So I've been following him since he was coming out of college and things like that. Always rooting for him. And then, of course, as a Commanders fan, I was sick when the Giants got him. But it didn't necessarily work out that well. He killed us, I believe, like a game or two. But overall, it wasn't great. And he seems like he may just be done. And then lastly completely away from NFL news but just in case some of y'all care Vince McMahon is selling 5.35 million TKO shares a value of 412 million dollars after the transaction he has about 15 million shares or about nine percent of TKO stock not football related but I just happened to see it and was like well I'll I'm not talking about my commanders for this video. This is just an overall general NFL video. We might as well get a little bit more general and mention that at the end. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button on the way out. Please leave a like on the way out. It's free for y'all and it means the world to me. So please leave that like. Subscribe if you want more content like this. Hit the bell next to that subscription button. Make sure you stiff arm that subscription button and the bell next to it. And again, let me know in the comment section how you feel about all of this. I'm going to try my best to try to read and reply to as many comments as possible let me know which rumors you agree with or disagree with like do you do you feel like some of these are even realistic let me know how you feel about like what are some of your predictions who may get traded who may get cut who may get signed who may get tagged all of that type of stuff let me know if you've heard anything or read anything or seen anything around the internet or wherever that maybe some information i provided is not true or maybe i missed some things and you want to add value and add extra information to what i've talked about or any other rumors that i didn't touch on if you heard anything about you know, potentially team A signing player A or something to a certain contract and they're heavily pursuing this guy. And I didn't mention it in this video. Please include it in the comment section. I really want this to be like an archive of all NFL rumors and reports heading into free agency and potentially the draft and all that type of stuff. So let me know everything that y'all know in the comment section. I'm trying my best to try to read and reply and any new information y'all provide. I'm going to try to make sure I heart it as well so it's kind of like at the top for everybody to read. So stay tuned, man. I really appreciate y'all. I'm working on more videos like this as well. Let me know if you want more videos like this. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out. Oh.